Hi, welcome to Unwrapped. I'm Mark Summers, and today we are going to explore the time-saving technology of microwave ovens and discover the tricks behind the treats you love to heat. The very first microwaves were criticized as a publicity stunt that would ruin the art of cooking. Well, it didn't ruin cooking, but it certainly changed it. Now, we're going to get started with a little history behind this popular kitchen appliance. Watch. In today's fast-paced world, Americans use their microwaves on average of twice a day, but how many know how it really works? Well, you plug it in, and then it starts heating it. Well, I know it uh, has something to do with the ions, maybe. No idea. <laughs> The microwave actually uses electromagnetic energy to excite molecules inside the food, heating it up and cooking it incredibly fast. Legend has it this reaction was first observed in 1946 when an engineer named Dr. Perry Spencer noticed that the chocolate bar in his pocket had melted after standing in front of a magnetron tube. Percy then placed some popcorn kernels in front of the magnetron and Pop the world's first batch of microwave popcorn. The first commercial microwave was introduced in 1947 and it was a mammoth standing five and a half feet tall and weighing over 750 pounds. Each one cost a whopping $5,000. In 1967, Amana introduced the first countertop microwave called a radar range, which required some serious training. Once the microwave was installed in the home, a home economist from Amana actually followed up, came into the person's home, cooked their first microwave dinner. She then asked the housewife to cook something for her just to ensure that the housewife knew how to use the microwave oven properly. It wasn't until the 1980s that the microwave really caught on and became an affordable kitchen accessory. At the height of the microwave craze in the 80s, a radar range came off the line one every minute. Today, Amana still makes microwaves at its factory in Amana, Iowa. Each one begins from a 10,000 pound roll of steel. A giant press punches out various parts from the steel. Then they are dipped in an 11,000 gallon vat of paint. The freshly painted parts are baked dry, then taken to the assembly line where they are welded and screwed together to form the microwave cabinet. The control panel is made with what looks like stickers. First, the electronics are attached, then the buttons are stuck on top, and the entire panel is attached to the front of the microwave. We're able to program those high voltage boards right on the assembly line. As it moves down the line, the new microwave undergoes important testing. The first test is called interlock testing, which ensures the door will not open while operating. The next test is given by a clever machine named AMOS. AMOS is an acronym for Automatic Microwave Oven Scanner. AMOS scans the running oven for any wave leakage. Once it's passed, it's off to packaging. Today, Americans use their microwave for everything from frozen dinners to the ever-popular microwave popcorn. Whatever you use yours for, the Mighty Microwave has proven it's here to stay. Welcome back to Unwrapped, where we're serving up the secrets behind microwavable meals. TV dinners, they've been a part of watching television since the 1950s. And today, more than 66% of households watch television at dinner time. And those dinners can be heated up during commercials in this, the microwave. So what do you say we take a look at the technology behind TV dinners? When you think of TV dinners, it's conventional to think of the oven. But in the 1980s, a new fast food trend influenced TV dinners and their trays. It's what we call dual ovenable. And we make our trays out of a material that works in both ovens. But here at the Hungry Man Research Lab, a whole lot more goes into giving a TV dinner a microwave makeover. At some point, you have to look at your product through the eyes of the consumer. You have to prepare it, or in this case also develop the instructions that they will use so that they get the same quality product at home that we have so painstakingly developed here. The frozen food is weighed to keep track of moisture loss during microwaving. 
The transparent screen keeps the food moist while also allowing steam to escape through ventilation holes poked or cut into the plastic. A voltmeter ensures that the test kitchen microwave is set to 120 volts, the same as a household microwave oven. So my challenge is to make sure that they are able to be prepared in say 10 to 15 minutes. Even the TV dinner tray plays an important role in cooking. Microwave energy prefers things that are round and no, no sharp corners and edges. You smell the aroma? Oh, this is my favorite part. Hungry Man recommends letting the food sit for two minutes, then stir to even out the heat. A probe tests if the proper temperature has been reached. With the heavier, lower moisture meat components, it is a challenge to get them to, to cook well in a microwave oven. If the cooking instructions have been written and followed correctly, the probe should detect a temperature of 160 degrees in the TV dinners. I'm also interested in how the meal looks. But tasting is believing. Moist and delicious. Some foods, like the bread on this hero sandwich, don't always start out microwave friendly. That particular product required some special technology to develop a bread that's going to stay moist and appetizing out of the microwave oven. Other dinners do best with plain old conventional cooking. And if you want the crispness out of a fried chicken, you know that you really need to put it into a conventional oven to get that crisp texture. A microwave just won't give it to you. Although Hungry Man has developed new flavors like the sports grill and steakhouse lines to keep up with restaurant trends, comfort food fixes are still their top sellers. It's the basic stick to your ribs food that men love. Hungry Man says their most popular flavor is one of the originals, Salisbury steak. And another microwave staple is this. It is the burrito. El Monterey has been cooking up convenience for decades. We're going to find out how they keep their Mexican flavors quick and current. Quick eating on the go is definitely best when it's handheld. And these days, burritos are a popular convenience store item. Just pop it in the microwave, right in the wrapper. El Monterey actually got its start in the convenience stores of the 1960s, the classic mom and pop shop. We uh, supplied the stores with a little pot, then a sign that said fresh hot Mexican tamales. And that was an instant winner. And once tamales took off, they decided to branch out with burritos. So what we learned from the tamales was that, you know, convenience was really important to, the, you know, the consumers. So we thought about, well, what would be another product that we could come out with? The burritos just picked up where the tamales uh, left off. And El Monterey's burritos of today are still inspired by Mom's original recipe. What we try to do is we try to pattern the flavor profiles of our products after the way my mom used to fix Mexican food at home. The trick is mixing things up on a larger scale. Each steam cooking kettle can handle 8,000 pounds of fill. They start off with pre-cooked meat and pinto beans. Next, water, thickener, and spices are added to the mix. The batch cooks for up to three hours. Once the filling is done, it's time to make the wrap. Fresh flour tortillas baked by the thousands. First, the flour, water, and other ingredients get kneaded together. The dough is sent to the extruder. And the thick sheet is pressed thin to 1 16th of an inch. Cut into circles, the tortillas shoot through the oven, baking only for 25 seconds. Once they cool off, the tortillas meet their match at the depositor. Piping hot filling plops onto the fresh baked wrapper. Specially sanitized hands roll the burritos at super speed. One burrito line, or what we call a cell group, which is three people, they roll 70 burritos a minute. So you have two rollers, so that's 35 burritos a person per minute. And these rollers make it look so easy. Rolling burritos is an art. It requires a great deal of dexterity. Next, the burritos march off to the spiral freezer where they go from 175 degrees to minus 20 in 35 minutes. The quicker you freeze something, the, you know, the better it is for the product. Then they're wrapped and packaged, ready for a microwave near you. And while El Monterey continues to make waves with their authentic Mexican foods, 
They hope that burritos become as American as apple pie. Baseball Chevrolets and a hot dog? Well, how about baseball Chevrolets and a burrito?